That's yeah, here. but you haven't dived since that, no, so no. you're doing a refresher. Yeah, I'm going to do a refresher and then uh, two dives. Welcome back to the Rangeless Travel Podcast. We're your favorite adventure travel hosts. I'm Britt, and this is Ryan. Together, we travel the world by plane, train, and 89 Ford Sportsmobile, capturing the beauty, adventure, and culture in every corner of the globe. Currently, we're traveling the U.S. in an old van with our two dogs, Layla and Cedar. Every Tuesday, we share stories and tips to inspire you to book that next trip. So go ahead and don't be shy. Follow along with us at Rangels underscore on Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Let's dive in. On this week's episode of the Rangers Travel Podcast, we're going over your complete guide to getting Patty certified in El Nido, Philippines. El Nido is worldwide renowned for scuba diving everywhere. It was first discovered by Jacques Cousteau, the famous underwater explorer, and... It is amazing. It is it's so beautiful. So beautiful. There's just huge coral gardens everywhere. Limestone cliffs are looking down over you. We saw multiple turtles. Yeah. It was just so incredible. Honestly, getting your patty cert there is going to be the best and the worst thing you ever do for yourself because it's hard to go diving anywhere else once you go diving in in Alabama. yeah that's like, like it's just hard it doesn't get much better than it that. doesn't it doesn't so it, it's it's a disservice and a service to yourself yeah but before you go yeah before you go if you're getting your open water you need to be able to swim like for a discovery dive and things like that some places allow you to go and you don't have to swim for to get your open water it is a requirement they will test you on it you have yeah. to swim 200 meters by yourself unassisted without stopping there's also some medical conditions that can prohibit you from scuba diving there's not a lot but the best information to find that is on the Patty website. Yeah, so you just need to do a little bit of the research to make sure. And then also sometimes it's talking to your own doctor. Mm -hmm. So if you have any concerns about it, call up your primary care physician and just double check with them that diving is something that is okay for you to do. Right. And now as part of the open water curriculum, there is a online learning part and it takes about 10 hours to complete. If you know you're going to El Nido diving, Go online, check the reviews out, pick a dive school, mm -hmm. like we did with Palawan Divers. We and highly recommend them. Could not recommend them enough. Yeah. If you pick in advance and you pay online, they'll send you the link to complete all your e-learning mm -hmm. before you even get there. You can do it at home. So you're not wasting an entire day in El Nido. Yeah. Of like, your trip, just exactly. like having a study. Yeah. Granted, like, if you do do it that way, that's okay. Like, you can do it, sit on the beach all day and study. Not a horrible thing, but... I think it'd be better yeah, just to the, do it before you get there, and, and then the, you don't have to worry about it. It's done. And the Wi-Fi is not the most reliable in yeah. the world, so it, it's bad. like I didn't, but I would have preferred if I'd done it. But at if home you before. went back, you would have done yes, it before. Yeah, exactly. And then another thing to note is after your last dive, you've got anywhere between eighteen and twenty-four hours where you cannot fly. Mm -hmm. Like it's dangerous for you to fly. You could get the bends. So just keep that in mind when you're booking your flight. That shouldn't really be a problem in El Nido because it's kind of hard to get to if you've got to take a bus and a van and all of these things. But you can fly. El Nido does have an airport. So if you're flying in yeah. and out of El Nido, do remember you're not supposed to fly. Like you can't like land that morning either and like dive that afternoon. No. So like you need to book your flights accordingly and it needs to have that buffer space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you learn all about that in the e-learning. So mm -hmm. if you're doing that in advance, you'll learn all about it. Now, the cost of the Patty Open Water was $420. USD. US dollars. Yeah. Which, it, compared to some places in Southeast Asia, is a little bit more expensive. But, but compared to the world. On a global I mean... scale, that's... Uh, it's pretty affordable. Yeah. Especially given the quality of the diving there. Yeah. And the quality of the instructors and you mm. get the boat that goes out and you get all your equipment and they teach you how to um, read the dive computer and it's your wetsuit and it's lunch and right. it's your drinking water. It's everything. And like the boat. The only thing that's not included in that price is there's an eco fee. It's $3.50. In USD. In USD, that allows you... But you have to pay that whether no matter what you do in El Nido, so like you're going to have to pay it anyway, and it's good for like 10 days. 10 days, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, where to stay? We stayed in... Well, let's backtrack a little bit, because what should you pack? Now, if mm. you're diving in a dive school, they're going to provide you with all the dive equipment you need, so you don't necessarily need to bring your own. 
Um, the only thing that we travel with is you had a, well, I brought a mask, but it was too big for my face, but it happened to fit Ryan's big face mm -hmm. perfectly. And I so, love it. Yeah. So if you like have a specific mask or a specific snorkel that you like using, then right. bring that. Or if you already have your equipment, bring it, but you do not need to go out and buy any special equipment to no. go into your PADI certification. It will all be provided for you from the dive school mm -hmm. that you're using. Uh, I would also suggest bringing reef safe sunblock, yes. which is going to be like a mineral sunscreen. It's going to be the zinc. It's going to be all of that. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to provide a wetsuit yes. for you. But, but you need to wear a swimsuit underneath that. But you need to wear a swimsuit underneath. Then you just need to change your clothes for afterwards, a towel. Yeah, maybe, and then just maybe pack your normal stuff. If you want. For like in between dives on the boat or something. You, but again, there's like a lip, so you're fine. Like there's You could a, bring snacks if you want. I would bring water on the boat for sure. They do have drinking water, so you don't have to bring that yeah. on the boat. But we do bring a reusable um, water. water bottle, but they had cups on the boat. So mm. like it's fine because El Nido tries to be plastic free. Right. So you can't even bring plastic on, out onto the boat, into the water mm -hmm. and stuff. So don't worry about it. You don't need to bring that much. Don't buy anything special. No. It's really just reef safe sun cream yeah. is the only thing you'll need to bring. Mm -hmm. um, where to stay, we stayed in by Kelan Beach, which is like a 10 minute walk outside of El Nido town. Uh, we stayed at Hadifi Resort. And I would they, recommend it. It was beautiful. It was really good. It was $44 a night. For we both our, of us. We had our own like private bungalow on the beach. It mm -hmm. was beautiful. Breakfast was included, which was really nice because you have to get up early. You have to be at the dive shop by like 8 o'clock in the morning. So yeah. it's nice if you can just get up and breakfast is ready for you. Yeah, it's just one less thing to worry about. Yeah. And then on top, and then besides there, well, the beach was really nice there. I mm -hmm. recommend staying there. It felt very like you were in a neighborhood. It was a beautiful beach. But you can also stay in El Nido itself. And right. you can even stay at your dive school. So yeah. a lot of the dive schools have accommodations attached to them. They're usually a little bit more expensive than some of the accommodations around the area. Right. But then you're right there at the school and it's kind of just like everything's all included. Yeah. And everyone so, else you're going to meet there is going to be doing your di their diving too. So yeah. like, it's kind of like a little community for it. And too. a social thing. So you, yeah. that could be an option. Or you can just stay in the town of El Nido. Mm -hmm. There's lots of accommodations there. Or then you can also stay a little bit down the way at Coron Coron. Yeah. Which isn't that far. It's, it's like, like a 20 minute, minute walk outside of yeah. El Nido town. You'd want a scooter if You'd you stayed there You'd probably want a scooter, though. but yeah. So, it, but it's a little bit quieter there. There's not all the nightlife going on there. So it really just depends. On what you're looking for. On what you're looking for after your dive. So where mm -hmm. you want to stay. Now, first day after you've completed your e-learning, you're going to be introduced to your instructor. It's usually, it's either going to be like one-on-one -on -one or two people to one instructor. We got lucky and we got one-on-one -on -one when we went, which mm -hmm. is great. Uh, because you don't feel rushed, you don't feel like everyone's taking their time for you. It's really, really good that way, I think. Um, I feel like you really get to learn a lot, too, because like you have yeah, you someone can ask available questions. that's yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, you'll get introduced to them at the at the dive shop. They'll give you a quick quiz on some of your points stuff. from your, your test that you just did. It's usually safety stuff of like yeah. they, just so that like you're ready. Mm -hmm. It's also helping them gauge like how much they're going to need to intervene to help you and like right. where some of your weak points may be. Right. And then they're going to fit you up for your wetsuit. You're going to put that on and you're going to head out to the boat. It's right across the street. You go out, walk into the off the beach, and mm -hmm. the boats are there. Then anywhere between like thirty minutes to like an hour ride from El Nido, you're gonna be have all the dive sites right there for your first dive of the first day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's gonna, just be, gonna be skills. It's gonna be skills in a confined water dive, which means shallow water. So you get in off the boat. It's a it's a boat dive. You drop in from the boat. You swim to the shallow water, and you're gonna be doing your skills in like probably like five feet of water. You're gonna be maybe on your knees doing the partially flooded mask. You're gonna take out your regulator, put it back in. That was what you were afraid of, the I, mask. The thing. mask, the full flooded mask is, you don't actually have to do that until day two, but it, that's what I struggled with the most, just because I kept forgetting to breathe when I took off my mask. <laughs> And it took me a while just to like override the, the lizard brain into like, oh yeah, you're in the water, but you can still breathe, don't worry. Yeah. That first breath underwater is like the strangest feeling, yeah. but it's also, it feels like so wrong, but it's like so exciting and yeah. you get this like real big rush of adrenaline because mm -hmm. you're like, I'm breathing underwater. Yeah. My lifelong dream of transforming into a mermaid has finally came true. Almost. No. <laughs> Not almost. 
Yeah, so that's what they're gonna do. Like all, there's a bunch of other tests. Like there's the alternate air, so you have to use someone's octopus or use your instructor's octopus. Um, the full flooded mask. You have to tow your instructor, like as a simulated tired diver. You have to do an emergency ascent, which is where you struggled the yeah, most. Yeah, I get a little excited because so what you have to do is you have to like gingerly and like steadily release bubbles, like from your mouth and your nose while you're ascending. ascending as you're going up in the water, right? And there's usually, there's like a rope. So you like go up on the little rope mm. is usually how they do it. Sometimes they don't, but it can be done different ways. But I did it on like the little rope and I blow all my bubbles out too fast. <laughs> Every time. I'm like, <sighs> oh, I still have like, like so much more space I need to go right. up and I'm all out of bubbles. So there was like, I think I had to swim back down like two or three times before I controlled my bubbles i just get overzealous mm, you're like i don't i don't want my lungs to explode i gotta leave out all I, my air now. i got i gotta get rid of these bubbles <laughs> that's funny um another thing that you have to learn how to do is how to navigate with a compass under the water mm -hmm. it's pretty simple it's like none of it is i mean i might be i'm i have a lot of experience around the water i grew up in yeah. the ocean i was a lifeguard as a teenager like i was you know i'm an ocean person mm -hmm. um and like it, none of it's really that wild Difficult. and crazy. It's, no, it, no it's, it's it's more about like remaining calm and like keeping your cool. I was gonna anything. say it's more of a headspace thing than yeah. anything else because it's a sensation that you've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. So some people do panic when they get under the water. So it's really just a matter of like staying calm, trusting in your instructor, and being like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Yeah, everything will be okay. Because you're not going anywhere. And El Nido's really good because there's not like super strong rip currents or no. anything like that. So you're not like fighting against anything. It's there's like, a couple of drift dives, but it's nothing like crazy, crazy. But your first one's going. You're not like, the mm. your first get in, they're not taking you anywhere wild or crazy. Yeah. It's it's relaxed. It's a very relaxed area to get your open water. And there's just so many beautiful fish and stuff. And the water clarity is really For the most part. Most really of the year, clear. the water is really, really clear. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the, and it's warm too, so you're not like having to deal with like getting cold. No, in the water it's like or it's like, like that. 29 degrees Celsius, so it's yeah. like it's almost it's almost bathtub temperature. It's like 80 like, degrees, yeah. like Fahrenheit. In the warm season, you're not you're probably not going to be wearing a wetsuit. I went. I've dove in El Nido with a wetsuit and without one. Both are fine. I would recommend wearing a wetsuit just so you don't have to wear sun sun cream in yeah. the ocean. Because the sun cream affects our coral reefs, even if it's mineral and it's reef safe, we just it, it's it's reef safe, but like it's still like we don't need we don't need to put anything in there that we don't need to. So I just wear the mm -hmm. um the what's it called wetsuit. Wet I just wear the wetsuit so that like I'm not putting sunscreen all over my body and then going into the ocean yeah. because it's just not needed. Um. But if you like the clearest and the warmest the water is going to be is in March and May. Right. So that's where you're going to, that's when you're going to want to go if you want clarity and mm -hmm. high visibility in the water, which I would recommend. Right. The only thing is in the lowest visibility, which is um, December, January, even into February a little bit, is the lowest visibility. Like three to 10 meters is right. going to be it. But if your one goal is to either see mantas or potentially whale sharks, it's a sustainable way to do that because their natural migration moves through there. But you're also with natural migration, you're not guaranteed to see them. No. And if you're doing your PADI certification, I would say don't worry not, about that. Yeah. Go during March or May when the visibility is really high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just go during dry season. Yeah. And yeah, so... You're going to be out in the boats all day, all day, basically. You get three dives a day. Your first dive is the confined water dive that we spoke about already. Second dive is going to be skills dive at like all, full depth, basically, like 18 meters, where they go over some more skills and things like that. And then your last dive of each day is pretty much you've done all of the requirements for that day. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Like, just, just enjoy yourself. You don't have to worry about all the skills and things like that. It, it's nice to be able to like have that extra time if you need it and you didn't complete all the skills in the first two dives, but most people do. And it's just, 
to enjoy yourself. It's like... And it's beautiful. It's and there's so really vibrant beautiful. reefs and there's lots of wildlife and fish and turtles. Mm. And... One thing that like I can confidently say is it's one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And I'm really glad that I chose El Nido to do it. Um, I might have shot myself in the foot a little bit there because El Nido is one of the best places in the world and now I'm spoiled. Um, but I don't think you'll regret it. I it's really fun. It is really Just fun. Just go and book, book it already. Yeah. That's it for us this week. If you want to catch more of us, you can find us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Spotify. And anywhere else you get your podcasts at rangeless underscore. Until next week. Bye. Bye.